Hello, most of all, ladies and some men. It feels, uh, doesn't feel awkward for me because my name is Dick Fierman and um, I'm leading an all women team. Um, and I don't know why that happened, but probably it must be a reason why I'm here. So in normal life, I moderate a Dutch website called foodlog.nl. Um, let's not talk about foodlog.nl, but just about this webinar. I have a lot of, of experience in moderating complex discussions. I do that every day since 16 years now. So welcome to this uh, webinar on green and digital transition, the potential of women within the Green Deal. And I'd like to start out with the words uh, Charlene Lambert chose to, to start this webinar. The words are by Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Committee. Gender equality is a core principle of the European Union, but it is not yet a reality. In business, politics and society, we can only reach our potential if we use all of our talent and diversity, using only half of the population, half of the ideas, or half of the energy is not good enough. And that is what President, uh, the, so the, the president of the EC, Ursula von der Leyen said. This is about women entrepreneurship, women in the Green Deal. And when this started out, I kept asking, what is it about? Did emancipation fail? Are women angry? Do they want more power? What is it about? Well, and then I learned, I learned a lot. In the past six months when we prepared this, 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 this meeting, I learned what it is about. And I hope it comes out in this meeting. So this is the cliffhanger. I think it will come out and let it come out. I welcome Lysia Radeliki. She's from the cabinet of EU Commissioner for Equality, Helena Dali. And please, Lysia, you're trained in Belgium, you're trained in uh, the UK, you're trained in philosophy, and you have a background in human rights, uh, gender equality, and women's rights. And now you're on the cabinet of Commissioner Dali. Please tell us, what is the EC doing about gender equality and using this other half of the potential we aren't using for some reason. The floor is yours. Thank you, Dick, and, and thank you for inviting me. And I will immediately continue on what you have, have been saying. Indeed, uh, the president's words are, are what she has been expressing from the very beginning of her mandate. She has made uh, gender equality and equality a priority of her mandate. And with that in mind, um, this has set a unique political uh, opportunity because we felt very quickly that there was this political will and engagement to do something about gender equality. And not only by saying those words, but also putting that in action. So the president has created a, uh, a, a commissioner portfolio to deal with equality, and that's equality in a very large sense, so not just gender equality. She also managed to um, have a gender balance commission college, so that was also a first. And then there were those priorities that I've mentioned, like gender equality. And with that in mind, but also with the demand that had been uh, at the European scene for a, for a long time coming from the European Parliament, but also from stakeholders, from member states, there was this request of having a gender equality strategy that was ambitious. Um, and so this was the first deliverable for Commissioner Dali uh, to present this gender equality strategy uh, for 2020-2025. Now, we wanted something that was visionary, ambitious, forward-looking, uh, and inspiring. And so with uh, after a consultation with the stakeholders, with uh, parliament, with member states, we decided we wanted to make sure that the gender equality strategy uh, presents a vision of Europe where women and men in all their diversity can uh, lead, thrive, and be free because that was the Europe that we wanted to see, or that's the Europe we want to see. Uh, 
So the gender equality strategy is written in that way. So there is a chapter on needs, there is a chapter on thrive, and there is a chapter on being free. Now, under the chapter of lead, this is about, you know, making sure that women are um, in, in the econ economic field, but also in political spheres, uh, in decision-making positions. So it presents a set of actions that uh, allow us to do that. And you have all probably heard of the Women on Boards uh, directive that has been on the table for a while, and, and we are facing some challenges, but it's the priority of the commissioner to, to move uh, that file forward so that we can actually uh, have a, an agreement uh, in council. In the chapter on Thrive, uh, what we want is, is we have put actions forward that allow women and girls to thrive equally on the labor market. And one of the actions and priorities in that chapter was closing the gender pay gap and more precisely uh, put forward a legislative proposal on uh, pay transparency. And for those who have been following gender equality issues in the past months, uh, in the beginning of March, we put forward that uh, proposal on pay transparency directive. So we were very happy that almost one year after the gender equality strategy, we were able to do that. And then there is the last chapter, um, that is the chapter that talks about being free. It's being free from violence, being free uh, from gender stereotypes. Now, being free from violence, that's where the priority of uh, making sure that we ratify the Istanbul Convention uh, is actually fulfilled. And while also there we have some challenges ahead, uh, it is still a priority of the Commission to, to, to ratify the Istanbul Convention, but uh, the President has also pronounced herself that she will do everything she can to make uh, to, 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 to combat violence against women and domestic violence. And therefore, while we are waiting uh, the, the pronouncement of the court on the Istanbul Convention, uh, we are preparing the work to present a legislative proposal uh, in case uh, the, the, the Istanbul Convention is not being ratified. And that would be as ambitious or as, as, as close to the Istanbul Convention uh, as possible uh, within obviously the limits of, of what the Commission can do. Um, but that should be uh, presented by the end of the year. Um, being free from gender stereotypes, uh, that's also something that we feel that stereotypes is something that still um, is a stumbling block for women to uh, be empowered or to lead and thrive uh, in the different fields, in different sectors, at different uh, levels. Now, one can question, so what has this strategy more than what has been done before? Well, of course, the issues that I have put forward are issues that are ongoing and that have we have been working on for a long time, but we wanted to make sure there were concrete actions that we could deliver on. But we also wanted to tackle new issues. I mean, we call them new, but they're not that new anymore. And that's what brings me to, for example, the digital transition, but also the Green Deal. Uh, to make sure that uh, also the gender equality aspect is addressed in that field. Another novelty of the strategy is the gender mainstreaming approach. And this has been um, done for a very beginning by creating the task force. The task force for equality sits within the secretary general um, secretariat and is there to uh, monitor and connect the different DGs on equality issues and to make sure that equality issues are addressed from a very early stage of policy making so that when it comes to the political level, meaning at cabinet level, that the mainstreaming has already uh, uh, happened. And I can say that being just over a year in the cabinet, we see a clear difference. Gender equality and equality issues are not just addressed from us here in the cabinet, but it seems to be everybody's responsibility and everybody is putting it uh, on their agenda and in their portfolios. So the fact that we work on gender equality issues and equality issues means that all other cabinets have their say in what we're saying and 
likewise, all other cabinets, we have a say in everybody else's um, uh, files as well. So that's how the gender mainstreaming is happening. And so that means that gender equality is not just our responsibility, but when it comes to agriculture, for example, uh, a gender equality approach is taken, or when it comes to fisheries, when it comes to budget, when it comes to um, to, to education, uh, economy, and so forth. And other novelty is that of making sure that uh, there is a connection or a link between what we're doing within the EU and what we're doing outside the EU when it comes to gender equality and women's rights. And that's why we were happy that after our strategy, the gender equality strategy, our colleagues working on external actions presented the gap three, so the gender action plan three uh, forward. Um, and so there you see that the issues that we cover in ours is also covered in theirs and vice versa. And one last uh, novelty that I would like to put forward is that of um, the, the intersectional approach. So actually acknowledging, but also addressing the fact that um, there can be multiple uh, discrimination taking place. And therefore, as a woman, you can be maybe a woman with disabilities or a woman uh, of different backgrounds. And that also has an influence on how you go through life. And so our work is therefore also interconnected with all the other work that we are doing. So we also presented a strategy on LGBTI, a strategy on anti-racism, uh, on Roma inclusivity, and, and on disability. And all those strategies refer to all those different uh, bases of discrimination. So that's the gender equality strategy. Now, when I received your invitation, um, I, I, I looked at, at the background note that I received and there was this question put forward, uh, what policy initiatives can merge and place women farmers and entrepreneurs uh, from the rural area at the front? And of course, the gender equality strategy is, you know, the... Uh, big document to and, and, and the big vision to take forward. But then I was also thinking at, at more specific things that could be useful for the people that are here in the room uh, and, and, and trying to answer that question. And one of the things that I wanted to say is the importance of raising awareness of women's representation and women's participation in agriculture and forestry, for example. I mean, um, the numbers are, 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 are known to some, but not to many. Um, and I think that having either platforms like yours, but also events like yours, is, allows this awareness raising to realize that there is an imbalance also in representation. And this knowing this and having this disaggregated data is extremely important to also be able to address this imbalance, this imbalances and inequalities. And in order to have policies that can address that and can empower women in that field. Um, the other thing that I wanted to put forward is the programs that the commission has put forward in particular for women entrepreneurs. Um, there are several programs available. And now this is women entrepreneurs in the very large sense. So I think that's- Lacey, I, I have yeah. to break in. It's it's uh, it's a quarter to, to three now. So- Okay. Could you, a big, and, and, and I'm interrupting you while you're getting to uh, <laughs> to the farmer's side, but please be brief and be as yeah. essential as possible. I will. So what I just wanted to highlight is those programs that can allow women entrepreneurs to learn and to move forward. They are called WeGate, and you can find that on the European website, as well as EEN for Women, an other program uh, that, that supports women networks, entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs. So they provide training, they provide exchange of information, they provide access to funds and so forth. So there it is important to highlight that so that women 
know where to get information and support and and to 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 be empowered in in their in their business now another thing that i wanted to highlight is the innovation side which i think is important for women in agricultural and fisheries for example and there i know that you had a a event where the commissioner spoke for international women's day and that's a great example of how to on the one side highlight women that uh, bring innovation, but also it's important in the whole Green Deal, um, uh, um, the Green Deal approach, because there, there is, the Green Deal will create so many new jobs. They will have to be innovative. They will have to be environmentally friendly. They will have to be taken into consideration and new energy forms. And there is the possibility where women can come in and one, be part of that change, be part of innovation, but also making sure that they are represented and, 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 and having those jobs that will be important in this whole green, but also digital transition. So sorry for having taken a bit more time than, than requested, but I hope that uh, this is useful. And I'm sorry I cannot stay, but I have another uh, engagement that I want to get to. I need to unmute myself. Uh, thank you, Lazia, um, for this presentation and for this short explanation. W are you willing to take questions if there are any questions that people will have afterwards? You, you you can send them to me. Yes, my my problem is that I cannot stay with you for for the debate. You 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 you, 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 so, you can't but have it. To send them. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'd say, well, applaud for Lacia, but you. we don't applaud in rooms like this. But my applause on behalf of everyone. Thank you very much, Lacia. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. Bye bye. And now I'd like to welcome Miss Christiane Lambert, the president of the French organization. There she is of the French organization FNSEA, the French umbrella, Farmers Umbrella Organization, FNSEA, or as I pronounce it in French, FNSEA. Bonjour, Madame Lambert, je parle français. I will introduce the, the questions in, uh, in English, but you'll, you'll make a presentation on your view on uh, the importance of women entrepreneurship. And I'd like to say this, I spoke to your assistant, being a woman in a Roman Catholic uh, environment in France, it's kind of conservative. That is the way we tend to see it up north in, in, in Europe. And yet you're there, not as a woman, but as a person, and perhaps you go about it as a woman. Et donc j'ai dit, vous êtes une femme, mais vous ne présentez, donc, donc vous mettez aucun accent sur être une femme, mais comment c'est être une femme à la tête de la FNSEA et quelle est pour vous l'importance de, de, de cette notion de women entrepreneurship Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Je suis désolée, je vais parler en français parce que mon anglais n'est pas assez perfectionné. Mais je pense qu'il y a une traduction. Est-ce que la traduction est simultanée, monsieur Oui. Parfait. Merci beaucoup. Just to interrupt, I apologize. The interpretation is consecutive. It's not simultaneous. So we will need some pauses after every two minutes. On a besoin de quelques pauses, Madame Lambert, parce que c'est uh, l'interprétation consécutive aujourd'hui. Donc, uh, après deux minutes à peu près, je peux faire l'interprétation uh, vers l'anglais. Très bien. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Merci pour uh, l'invitation à intervenir uh, devant vous. Je suis donc agricultrice en France, dans l'ouest de la France. Avec mon mari, nous sommes éleveurs de porc depuis une trentaine d'années maintenant. Et nous travaillons tous les deux sur l'exploitation, mais mes responsabilités m'éloignant de l'exploitation, c'est une jeune femme qui me remplace sur l'exploitation. Nous avons trois enfants, dont deux s'intéressent à l'agriculture. Et je vais parler devant vous de mon engagement à la FNSEA, au COPA, et de comment nous voyons l'entrepreneuriat au féminin et l'intégration des femmes dans les transitions, qu'il s'agisse des transitions économiques, environnementales ou numériques. 
So thank you very much for inviting me today to your online event. Uh, I am a farmer in France, in the west of France. I am a pig farmer along with my husband and have been doing so for 30 plus years. As I said, we work together on the farm and we have three children, two of which are interested in, um, in farming themselves. Today, I'm going to speak to you about uh, women entrepreneurship. I'm going to talk to you about the integration of women in uh, the transitions, whether these are economic, environmental, uh, or societal transitions. Merci beaucoup. Les, la Commission européenne a fixé un objectif ambitieux avec le Green Deal qui est un horizon nouveau pour les agriculteurs et pour tous les secteurs d'activité. Ça ne concerne pas que l'agriculture, mais l'agriculture qui occupe entre 50 et 60, voire plus, euh, 60% du territoire dans nos différents pays, a une responsabilité écologique de premier plan et donc nous sommes attendus. Les agriculteurs n'ont pas attendu le pacte vert pour engager des transitions dans leurs exploitations, qu'il s'agisse des pratiques agronomiques, des pratiques agricoles, qu'il s'agisse aussi de l'évolution de, des conditions d'élevage avec le bien-être animal ou l'économie circulaire en élevage. Les agriculteurs et les agricultrices, depuis pas mal d'années, se sont formés pour être plus compétents et gérer les transitions et l'adaptation permanente dans les exploitations. So the European Commission has set some very ambitious goals within the framework of the European Green Deal. And these affect not just farming, but all economic activities. Farming represents 50 to 60 percent of the territories in our relative countries. And farming has an environmental responsibility to fulfill. So we therefore have some expectations on our shoulders. Farmers are being asked to undergo transitions uh, when it comes to the farming practices, when it comes to environmental conditions, and uh, in other matters such as animal welfare or the circular economy. And our farmers have been training to adapt to all of this. Le secteur agricole est un secteur majoritairement masculin, mais il y a de plus en plus de femmes, de plus en plus de jeunes femmes dans les écoles et les établissements d'enseignement agricole, de plus en plus de femmes jeunes agricultrices et de plus en plus de femmes salariées dans les organisations ou les entreprises agricoles. Et l'agriculture est un secteur important en emploi puisque c'est le septième secteur, septième secteur employeur au niveau européen. Mais en France, C'est seulement en 1961, l'année de ma naissance, que le mot agricultrice est rentré dans le dictionnaire français. C'est dire si c'est récent, alors qu'il y a toujours eu des agricultrices dans nos pays. Farming is a very male-dominated sector. However, we're seeing an increasing number of uh, women in the sector and young women in agricultural schools, uh, agricultural uh, training institutions. And we're also seeing an increasing amount of female workers in farming organizations. Uh, therefore, the farming sector is an important sector. It's the uh, seventh largest employer uh, in terms of the sector. However, in France, for example, we had to wait until 1961 for the word agricultrice, which translates as female farmer in English, to be entered or appear in the French National Dictionary. So while female farmers have always existed, it's actually very recent, this recognition. Il y a de plus en plus de femmes. En France, c'est 30% des actifs agricoles qui sont des femmes. Et au niveau européen, le pourcentage est de 25%, mais cette proportion augmente. Alors, il y a des productions où les femmes sont plus nombreuses, l'élevage de chevaux, l'élevage de moutons, euh, l'élevage de gros animaux, mais aussi l'élevage de lapins ou la viticulture. Elles sont par contre moins nombreuses dans les fermes céréalières aujourd'hui, même si... Les femmes aujourd'hui, avec les nouvelles techniques et technologies de mécanisation, sont à l'aise pour conduire le tracteur ou les moissonneuses. De plus en plus, les femmes ont recours aux équipements et aux agroéquipements pour le travail en exploitation agricole. Donc, 
So we are seeing an increasing number of women in the sector, as I was saying. In France, 30% of active farmers are women. In Europe, the uh, figure is at 25%. But all the same, we are seeing steady progress. In certain production sectors, we're seeing a larger share of women. So in the horse rearing sector, when it comes to sheep farming, large uh, animal farming, rabbit farming, and the uh, wine growing sector, there are fewer women involved in the cereal sector, however. Um, despite this, women are able to, to gain ground, especially with technology and machinery, and they're able to uh, to manage tractors, combine harvesters, etc., very well, especially with this technical equipment available. Je voudrais préciser un chiffre. Uh, les agricultrices et les femmes en milieu rural. Les agricultrices, c'est 40% de la population. Je dis bien 40%. Je crois que j'ai dit un chiffre erroné tout à l'heure. Et c'est 50% de la population en monde rural qui est représentée par les femmes. Ce qui fait dire à tous les observateurs que les femmes jouent un rôle très important dans le monde rural aussi, en étant très impliquées dans des entreprises ou des organisations et même dans des associations, et qu'elles contribuent beaucoup au, à la vitalité du, du monde rural. Just a quick correction there with the figures. So women in rural areas represent 40% of the total population. So 50% of the population in rural areas, more or less, is represented by women. Therefore, women play a very important role in rural areas, not just in terms of businesses, but in terms of organizations, associations, and they are playing a very important, uh, have important contributions uh, to rural life. Au COPA, nous trouvons très important de valoriser les initiatives conduites par les agricultrices dans la ruralité. C'est pour ça que nous avons créé les Innovation Awards pour mettre en valeur des actions de diversification, de vente directe, d'agrotourisme, d'accueil que les femmes développent à côté de l'exploitation ou dans l'exploitation, ce qui crée une activité et de l'attractivité. At Copa Kajika, we find that it's important to value initiatives led by women in rural areas. So we therefore have our innovation awards that aim to recognize women's efforts and contributions in terms of diversification, direct sales, welcoming people on farm, and many more. This ultimately helps to develop and create activity in rural areas. Je vous félicite et je me réjouis que vous donniez la parole à des femmes dans les panels suivants pour le mettre en valeur. Et il y a un, un, un autre dossier où les femmes jouent un rôle important, c'est la question du renouvellement des générations en agriculture, l'installation des jeunes agriculteurs. Les femmes sont très attachées à la transmission, à la transmission des valeurs, à la transmission du savoir-faire, du travail et donc à la transmission des exploitations. Et il y a aujourd'hui beaucoup de, de jeunes agriculteurs qui veulent s'installer et beaucoup de fermes qui vont être libérées par des agriculteurs. C'est donc un enjeu très important pour les dix ans qui viennent. I'm delighted that women are in the upcoming panels of these various different innovation awards that women are featuring among the examples and contributions uh, uh, in the final candidates. Uh, it's also an other important point that I'd like to mention, and that is a generational renewal. The, the question of setting up farms, etc. Women, when it comes to setting up farms, they really want to transmit values, their savoir-faire, for example. And today we're seeing a lot of female farmers who want to set up. And we know that this is going to be an increasingly important topic in decades to come because there are lots of farms that are looking to hand over at this point. Les femmes attachent une importance particulière à la formation. Les jeunes agricultrices qui s'installent passent par des parcours de formation professionnelle et beaucoup de femmes qui viennent à l'agriculture plus tard pour rejoindre l'entreprise de leur mari ou de leur frère se forment pour être compétentes. C'est très important de sécuriser le parcours professionnel pour avoir une vraie compétence et de l'indépendance dans la décision dans l'entreprise familiale.
Women are uh, also playing an extremely important role, um, and it's important to take into account their careers. Lots of women join the agricultural sector a little bit later on, joining forces maybe with their husband or their children, but they are investing in training. So this aspect of training is extremely important. It's essential that we can guarantee the continuation of a career in the agricultural sector and ensure that there is this independence in family decision-making guaranteed. Et donc, pour terminer, je dirais que les agricultrices mieux formées peuvent mieux lutter contre les fractures économiques numériques euh, auxquelles elles sont confrontées et aussi la fracture rurale. Mieux formées, elles arrivent plus facilement à convaincre les banquiers parce qu'il y, y a encore trop de banquiers qui ont du mal à faire confiance aux agricultrices. Il y a souvent des difficultés pour accéder aux fonciers, mais aussi pour accéder au financement. Mieux formées, elles peuvent avoir recours au numérique pour le travail dans l'exploitation, pour l'agriculture de précision avec les outils d'aide à la décision, mais aussi pour rompre l'isolement quand elles sont en zone rurale et éloignées des centres de décision. So to conclude, better trained female farmers means that they can better fight against and tackle this three-pronged divide, that is to say the digital, rural and gender-based divide. With better training, it's easier to convince banks to be on side because a lot of banks, unfortunately, are overcautious when it comes to helping out female farmers. There are a lot of obstacle, obstacles for women in the sector to access uh, credit and to access land. So better training can also help in terms uh, of the digital world. It can help women in terms of precision farming, in decision making, and it can help them to overcome any feeling of isolation when working in rural areas. Elles sont mieux formées, elles sont aussi plus ouvertes sur les questions de la société, souvent par l'intermédiaire des enfants à l'école sur les questions de l'alimentation, de l'environnement, de la biodiversité, sujets sur lesquels l'agriculture est très challengée, questionnée. Et tous ces sujets qui sont au cœur du Green Deal sont aujourd'hui le quotidien des entrepreneurs agricoles, qu'ils soient hommes ou femmes. Et c'est par la meilleure formation et la meilleure ouverture d'esprit que nous arriverons à répondre à ce qui nous est demandé dans, dans ces domaines. Et je souhaite donc qu'elles soient plus nombreuses à s'engager dans les organisations agricoles Nous avons des femmes au COPA, mais nous avons besoin de, de plus de femmes dans nos organisations pour justement porter euh, une représentation équilibrée de l'agriculture entre les hommes et les femmes. So, as I said, training is important, but it's also important to be open-minded and uh, this means that women are often more open-minded when it comes to societal questions. They, through having their children at school, they have uh, certain uh, open views when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to the environment, when it comes to biodiversity. And these are often issues that farming is finding itself being questioned about in general as a sector. And the, Euro, the European Green Deal and these, um, these aspects related to it are a day-to-day -day phenomenon for a lot of farmers. So, as I said, training and an open mindset will help in the long run. And ultimately, we need more women farmers. We do have uh, uh, women farmers uh, among the COPA um, team, but we need more within all of our organizations in order to achieve and strike this balance between men and women in the agricultural sector. Madame Lambert. Merci. Merci à vous. Et une petite question. On a complètement raté l'agenda parce qu'on a dépassé un peu le temps. Mais euh, diriez-vous, à la suite, donc, donc à la fin de votre, de, 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 de votre présentation, vous avez dit on, on a besoin de beaucoup plus de femmes. Mais vous dites en fait on a vraiment besoin de femmes pour euh, réussir le Green Deal. Est-ce correct on a besoin de femmes dans les organisations agricoles à tous les niveaux. Euh, Aujourd'hui, pour la, le Green Deal, je pense que les hommes et les femmes ont, sont engagés. Les femmes ont peut-être plus une sensibilité de la durée, de la transmission. Euh, un certain nombre d'études sociologiques parlent de plus de considération pour le respect de l'environnement. Ce n'est pas vrai pour, dans tous les cas. 
Mais par contre, pour avoir la formation, la compétence, je pense que les femmes ont peut-être plus envie d'aller chercher la compétence et la formation pour réussir les nouveaux défis, y compris pour la traçabilité, les nouveaux métiers liés à l'agriculture. Ce dont nous avons surtout besoin pour réussir le Green Deal, c'est de compréhension de l'opinion, de temps, c'est-à-dire un agenda, et puis de moyens d'accompagnement. Merci, madame. A Amy de traduire. In response to your question, we need women in our organizations at all levels. Today, we have the European Green Deal on the table, and both men and women are committed to achieving those goals. Women perhaps a little bit more in tune with transitions and the length uh, of time that this could take. So training and skills are important, and often women are more invested in in getting these skills in order to overcome the challenges, in order to provide for this traceability in the sector. Ultimately, what we need is understanding of the times that we, we live in, and we also need support and assistance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Madame Lambert. Um, and I'd like to go on to une autre Madame Lambert, Charlene Lambert from Canada. Can you put her on, Bianca? Yes, Charlene. Um, we've so we we are running out of the of of, of the time schedule. Mm -hmm. So please be brief. But the question to you is, why is it so important to do this? You are one of the initiators of this meeting. Why is women entrepreneurship so important? Please tell us. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Dick. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Dick and Bianca from Foodlog and also uh, Bronwyn from Copa and Kojeka for their teamwork to organize this webinar. Uh, I just will start with a very brief introduction of WEP. WEP is the Women Entrepreneurship Platform. It's a registered international NGO and umbrella organization based in Brussels. And our work is to raise the profile of women's entre entrepreneurship mainly at EU institutions. Uh, in fact, there are nearly 5 million women entrepreneurs in Europe, but they only represent 33% of all entrepreneurs. And we believe that that amount should be increased. WEP is also uh, has consultative uh, status with UN's ECOSOC. And uh, so we work very closely with UN women. We believe that the Green Deal is an excellent opportunity uh, for promoting women's uh, entrepreneurship and women's empowerment in rural women. And uh, we think that, uh, you know, this is the moment that we have to grab and, and, uh, and use to uh, encourage more women and invite more women and raise the profile of women to become entrepreneurs. Um, it's especially important that women farmers and women entrepreneurs in rural areas are, uh, are buying into this uh, because they are very close to the land, close to the environment. They're at the forefront of the Green Deal and a digital transition. And um, we need to have them in place to ensure that uh, we move ahead in the right way. But the problem is we need to bridge the gap and find a, and, and level the playing field so that policies and programs that are uh, in place now can um, put these women in the driver's seat. Um, why, why entrepreneurs and why now? Uh, entrepreneurs are sol problem solvers. They're known to be problem solvers. And uh, we know also that small and me medium-sized businesses are the backbones of our economy. Uh, entrepreneurs create wealth and new jobs and help to shape our economy. Women are also considered to be the uh, backbone of rural economies and national economies, and they are every bit as uh, entrepreneurs. Even though our pat patriarchal uh, societies do not always recognize the value of their work, women are often seen as someone who can come and clean up the mess, and their work on the family farm is not always completely recognized, but they are there very frequently sitting at the kitchen table uh, contributing to strategic decision making and important products and services that their family farm uh, produces. 
And uh, they also have a, 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 an important role to play uh, to, uh, on the impact of the environment and climate. Um, many cases, in many cases though, women are juggling a number of key tasks to keep the farm running. They're working at bookkeeping, they're administrators, they're looking after the family, the children, uh, the elderly, the home. And uh, unfortunately, these multiple roles and responsibilities uh, frequently aren't paid and aren't recognized. Uh, but recently, the World Wildlife Fund came out with a report on October 15th, which is the International Day of Rural Women. And they, st they stated that women perceive the company, which is the family farm in this case, not only as a source of income, but also it's a lifestyle. So they are, women are more invested in, in uh, the, the farm from, a, from many different points of view. And they said also that the ecological transition of the agricultural system is today a female one. Now, why are we so interested from a, a, a women's entrepreneurship point of view? Why are we so interested now? Our, our planet is broken. As we speak, the, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat or don't have access to, our health and that of our families, our homes and communities, are all currently at stake, at, at stake. And these fundamental problems are due to the two crises we face, the global climate crisis and COVID-19. Both of them have been well documented and funding programs have been uh, brought into place to assist us to get through these difficult times. The Green Deal in, is in fact a 1 trillion euro uh, program over the next 10 years. And the Green Deal closely follows the UN 2030 agenda. So what is holding women back? Well, when we look at the Green Deal policies, we realize that the potential to get women equally involved in programs is fundamentally inadequate. Women, for example, are at the bottom of the rung when in the EU when it comes to education and training in important digital technologies. Only 24 out of every 1,000 female graduates have an ICT connected subject. And of these, only six out of 1,000 graduates go on to work in these fields. Likewise, regarding access to finance, support programs are currently not reaching women, where only 2% of all initial funding reaches women-led startups. And I recently learned of a case which happened just one year ago a young woman farmer in Europe wanted to uh, went to a major European bank to uh, finance the purchase of the family farm. And she was asked the question, how will you manage if you have children? Can you imagine this happened just a year ago? Multifunctional farms are uh, uh, women farmers' responses to our need for genuine food, and produced with practices that respect the environments. They also include secondary uses on the farm, which women farmers want to start, such as agritourism, educational and personal care services, child and elderly care services, and protection of local traditions. Um, during the COVID-19 crisis, we saw that the transformation and direct sale of farm products to consumers became more important and this is also part of multifunctionalism. Now, I want to just finish by um, uh, mentioning that uh, to augment the deal flow of creative solutions to address the problems we are confronted with, we need to have all hands on deck, men and women, to generate the ideas that will get us through the challenging times. And this is in keeping with what uh, President von der Leyen stated earlier, as Dick mentioned. Women entrepreneurs are increasingly being rec recognized as a huge untapped resource, bringing with them new perspectives and answers to the problems we need to solve. But we need to have programs in place to bridge the gap and level the playing field to ensure that they have better access to finance, more training and in innovative technologies and supportive government policies, which could make the difference. Um, WEP is currently involved with SCOM and Wise for Challenges project, which is closely related to today's discussion. And we're running a survey 
to understand what is needed to ensure that more women in agriculture and rural women consider entrepreneurship. And we have um, uh, a survey that we're asking uh, you to fill out. It's going to be sent around uh, to all the participants and it might be in the chat or at least the link is in the chat, I believe. So please do fill it in and let us know what you think. It only takes 10 minutes. And if you would like to discuss it further, we're happy to uh, interview you. Please contact me. Now, my final comment is that the world is watching Europe on how we deal with gender and environmental issues. And now is an excellent opportunity to show that we know the way. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Charlene. Um, the world needs women to make a change. That is the clear message of the two Madame, Madame Lambert, I think. Uh, the one from France, the other one from you, from the Netherlands, but you're Canadian and you're appealing to Europe to lead the world in a feminine way. Thank you very much. And I completely forgot to say that you're a founding member of WEP, of WEP, as you call it. It was a clear plea for more feminine, the feminine touch uh, I, I have to say, I also hold a French passport, so... Okay. <laughs> we, we could speak French, but we won't, because it's, it's, it's kind of difficult in this setting. Charlene, thank you very much. And audience, as you've noticed, I'm running out of time, because I had, we had the, the agendas running out of time. There is too much to say, so we've lost 17 minutes. And we're going to lose even some in the next presentations, the next two presentations. I'd like to introduce two ladies. And the first will, one will be Dr. Biro. Bogi is her first name, Boglarka, but I cannot pronounce that correctly. So I have the permission to call her by the, by the name friends call her, it's Bogi. Bogi, you are a forester and that is very, very, uh, it's, it's, it's a special uh, occupation for a woman farmer. You grow trees, you're a forester. And you're going to tell us what it is about. And I'd first like to tell the audience that we're having two examples here of women-led farms. And the two of you were finalists in the, in the Copa Kojeka uh, Women's Innovation Awards. And you were chosen to present your cases here. And uh, Bogi, you are in, in the tree business. And the tree business is so important in CO2 sequestration and in biomass. What is the feminine touch? Well, you're first going to show us what you're, what you're, what you're doing, how you're doing your job as a farmer, how you're, what, what, what you're doing, what the farm looks like, what you're doing. And then perhaps you could answer the question, what is the difference you're making as a woman? The floor is yours, Bogi. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Bianca. Dear Mr. Berman, thank you for the introduction. Thank you very much for the invitation and the possibility to introduce myself and my professional activities. Just shortly about myself, I am 45 years old. I'm a forest engineer with a PhD degree. I'm also a forestry advisor for private forest owners, and I'm running a 36 hectare farm. But above all, I'm a mother, and I'm grateful to my two daughters and my husband for our happy family. It was a great honor to be among uh, the finalists of the Copa Kojeka Innovation Award for Women Farmers, and it makes me very happy that mine was the first forestry project that has been selected to the final five in the history of the award. Next slide, please, Bianca. Thank you very much. In my presentation, I would like to introduce myself and my job. And I also would like to highlight how I could build up a career as a woman in forestry, which is widely regarded as a masculine profession. Primarily, I see myself as an employer because I'm working full time at one of the largest state forest company in Hungary. I only became an entrepreneur to seek for alternative incomes and to secure my future. As a woman, I have probably always felt the need in a good sense to prove myself among men. And now I would like to present to you where this motivation led in my professional career. So basically the three directions shown here represent my professional work. Next slide, please. 
Thank you very much. I've been working for a state forestry company for more than 21 years. These days, my daily work consists of managing forest harvest, timber trade and logistics, as well as forest road maintenance. There are 16 male colleagues under my management I'm, and I'm happy to be a member of our team. On my farm, we are running a forest nursery where we have been producing forest seedlings for almost 20 years. Every year around 200,000 200, seedlings are sold, which are used mainly for reforestation and deforestation. The seeds that we use are of controlled origin and collected exclusively from nearby forests to make sure that we use propagation material that is best adapted to local climatic conditions, which is an increasingly high priority nowadays. The third pole of my forester life gives my consulting works. Private forestry in Hungary started uh, to gain momentum in the early 2000s. The new owners of the privatized forest uh, usually have no forestry education, experience or skill in forestry practice. As a consulting forester, I give advice to the private forest owners on how to meet the forestry requirement. Uh, as a part of my duties, I am conducting tree stand measurements and other field surveys, marking trees before thinning, uh, elaborating forestry plans and monitoring the health of forest, including giving prescriptions of the mitigating risk factors. Please, the next slide. Thank you very much. After graduation, I took part in various research projects and obtained a PhD degree in forestry. Following my PhD, I kept contact with research and education and for, and for seven years, I was teaching forest ecology and management at the University of Kaposvár. I wrote my thesis on the false hardwood of beach. False hardwood is an irregular colorization and texture modification of wood that starts to grow from the center of the tree tank. In case of beech species, this is regarded as a defect that reduces the financial value of the wood significantly. My doctoral dissertation included the application of non-destructive timber test methods. During this, I found computer tomography tests to be suitable for further consideration. The results uh, obtained exceeded all our expectations. Not only were we able to detect false hardwood, but, would, but we, would get a, uh, we could get a perfect picture from every point of the entire cross section. For me, it was a great success because our research team was the first in Europe who could detect false hardwood using an MR equipment. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. My positive experiences in forestry gave me the idea of starting an agricultural crop production with a much greener way of farming. Since we are a small farm, we do not have machines, but we are cooperating with the local contractors who can provide us with good quality services. Besides the wide variety of activities, my farm has a distinctive characteristic. Myself and the key professionals in the background are all women. They are all outstanding professionals, and I'm not only their proud partners, but we have also developed a friendship over the years. I believe that the key to success in my farming business is that we are all determined and perfectionist. Besides the climate change, wide game population in this region is a significant risk. I am proud that due to my experience as a forest uh, engineer and gamekeeper, I have developed a, a good relationship with the local hunting association. And as a result of our joint efforts, the wild game damage is minor. And as you can see in the pictures, fortunately, in my family, the future generations are also interested in this opportunity. She's my elder daughter. So my ultimate aim is to leave a well-managed modern family farm to my daughters. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. The core idea within my application is that although I'm working in traditional fields, forestry and agriculture, it doesn't mean that everything is the same as in the old days. We need to adapt to the changing environment. We need to meet the newly emerging expectations of society, and we need to adapt new technologies. So for farming today, there is no other way than to be innovative. 
On this slide, I would like to show you how the two sectors, agriculture and forestry, interact with each other in my case, and what results have been achieved. Innovation is usually understood as a groundbreaking novelty, revolution, revolutionizing an industry. I, on the other hand, believe that the real and lasting differences can be made through a series of small steps, starting with changing our attitude and looking at our current practice from a different perspective. In forestry, we need to think decades ahead and make decisions with great responsibility so that our forests in more than 100 years can be healthy, stable, and resilient. My forestry background helped me realize that long-term thinking and close to nature approach pays off, and this is also relevant in agriculture too. And now let's see a few ideas that if it works, could be called innovation. For example, the preservation and protection of soil values is a common element of the two sectors. Or we have long experienced in forestry that larger harvest areas are not ideal, although they are less expensive in short term, but in the long run, smaller gaps are better and faster to be regenerated because they are not so exposed to the drying effect of strong winds or the sun. Knowing this, I decided to divide our land into smaller plots which entails additional costs, but I believe that in the long term, we can make our farming more stable. Unfortunately, there is a lot to talk about the following, but the lack of skilled workforce is especially worrying in forestry, and increasing mechanization can be an escape route in connection uh, with this. I think it is also essential to keep track of the latest research findings on the current problems. I love the topic of gaining experience abroad to the end. Although looking back to my career so far, it, it has always been the most important reference source and inspiration. As an example, I can cite the already mentioned non-destructive testing methods I got acquainted with during my scholarship at the Freiburg Research Institute in Germany, or this award announced by Kopa Kojeka in connection with this, which I have gained very remarkable experience. And the last slide, please. Thank you. When I was told that I was on the team of the chosen ones, I understood a particularly important thing. If one for something, if one uh, works for something with passion, love, and responsibility, the result will eventually come regardless of gender. This kind of acknowledgement of my work means a lot to me because forestry is a typical male profession, not only in Hungary, but all around the world. In my opinion, the first step toward increasing the proportion of women at all levels of the agricultural sector, but especially in management, is that we need to overcome a lot of stereotypes. In this slide, I mentioned only a few features that are especially characteristic of women. For example, um, better communication skills, higher sensitivity, strong empathy, and so on. But yet, on closer inspection, these are the features, as already confirmed by several studies, that can make a leader successful in the current ever-changing environment. If we add to this that in agriculture we usually manage living organisms, I could even use the term nursing, which reminds me of something similar that is hard not to see, and this is family, that we women try to improve and manage with everyday innovations. In conclusion, I would like to say that for a long time, I was proud that I could get among the best in a job considered masculine, and also that I was constantly developing my abilities and skills with which I was able to address problems related to this non-female field on my own. But then my daughters were born, and now I know that both in my work and in my life, the rational and instinctive parts complement each other in a way that they fit perfectly, and that is how I'm moving forward. Next slide, please, and thank you much for your attention. And now for your question, Dick. So, as a woman in the world of foresters and hunters, you always need to prove yourself. And I always had this feeling that I need to do more to be recognized. 
So it was not easy at the beginnings, but now I think uh, my colleagues respect me as a professional foresters and they, and they listen to my opinion. Contractors and trade partners also know that they can rely on our agreement and they can come to me with their problems because I treat them um, as fellow partners rather than some legal entities. So, uh, so I would definitely say that I, as a woman, have an advantage in communication. For me, it comes naturally to talk openly, to build trust and to reduce stress even in situations when there is a conflict. So for example, when my boss talks about uh, our next year's business target, uh, I always think about what it means for our coworkers and business partners, and they feel it really. Another area where I could uh, see women's advantage is administration. Women tend to be more precise and consistent, which is good, but it can also become a barrier to career advancement because that's why we like to be fixed in office positions. And so we don't get field service compared to men. Unfortunately, very few women uh, working in forestry in Hungary. I think if the services of forests other than wood gained more importance in the future and forestry as a professional became more versatile, it would get more attractive for women. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I didn't unmute myself. Thank you very much for this presentation. And there was a question from the audience. Do you want to share your presentation? Can we send your presentation to everyone attending? Yes, it would be a great honor for me. Thank you very much, of course. Okay, then we'll do so. Then we'll do so. Thank you very much for your presentation, presenting yourself and presenting how you're using forestry in your arable land farming uh, operation, the other side of it. That is something that is coming up here in the Netherlands even. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now I'd like to call to Ines Tönis. Ines, you are a farmer in Belgium and you're one of three women leading a livestock farm, um, actually raising uh, Belgian blue cows. Your father died and your mother and your sister and you took over the farm. And you're one of the finalists. Please present us your feminine approach to, uh, to livestock farming. Thank you very much, Dick. Um, and thank you for the invitation. I will now share my screen uh, so you can see all the presentation. If it's good, you can see the presentation. Absolutely. So um, hello everyone. Um, I am a livestock woman farmer and I run a farm with about 200 cattle with the help of my mother and sister and uh, also other relatives. Um, the farm is called Fines, which is the aggregation of uh, farm and Ines. Our farm is situated in Glabiek, Belgium. So I will start by introducing myself. I am 26 years old. Uh, from a very young age, I grew up on the farm of my dad and his brother. So I am a real farmer's daughter. Because of my interest in agriculture, I went to study bioengineering and there I got my master's degree in, um, with a mayor in animal and a minor in plants. What I have noticed is that many people have lost touch uh, with agriculture and I want to give them more insight into the life on the farm by telling my story. So that is why I started the brand Finesse and through this brand, with the help of my sister, I try to tell the story behind the meat, mainly through social media. The key sentence of Finesse is let's meet, um, with which we want to emphasize that we are open to give people an insight into our company and that they can buy an honest piece of meat from our farm. Consciously producing quality products uh, and selling them to the local population is a story with a future. Uh, in addition, we also have an agricultural extension on our farm, uh, namely Play Farm Ravot. 
The play farm brings a lot of people to the farm so we can show them around. My mother uh, runs the play farm and all the visitors can enjoy the play farm and have an insight on the farm. Uh, there are three values that are central to the farm. These are sustainability, innovation and quality. By always taking sustainability into account, uh, I produce meat with respect for the future. Being innovative is directly linked to sustainability. Um, by applying new technologies and evolutions, the efficiency of the company will increase. However, it is important that there is always a balance between profitability and efficiency. By ensuring that a homogeneous product is always offered, our consumers um, can buy meat of high quality. So how do I try to be as sustainable as possible nowadays? Um, by using the Belgian white blue breed, uh, the highest efficiency in producing meat is uh, obtained. This breed is able to optimize the non-digestible raw materials to high quality meat. With the same amount of feed, the Belgian blue white blue cows produce more meat in comparison to other breeds. Uh, we also do our bit to produce a sustainable product with the feed. For the ruggage, uh, we only use feed from our own fields. And these fields are fertilized with the manure of our cattle, so the circle is complete. Uh, for the concentrated feed, we use the uh, Euroclim feed. This consists of only European uh, raw materials, which reduces the CO2 level enormously. Um, and by using extruded linseed, the emission of methane can be reduced up to 30%. Uh, I always try to keep track of innovation. Where there is a new development, we always look at the possibilities. Uh, currently, calving detection si systems and oestrus uh, detection systems are used on the farm to optimize fertility and consequently profitability. A great deal of attention is also paid uh, to the welfare of the cattle. Among other things, this is optimized by a brush, vaccina vaccination sh uh, scheme, uh, ventilation, and so on. In addition, the farmer's gut feeling is also uh, a must. By sufficiently observing the behavior of the cows, I can respond directly to their needs. Uh, and after all, healthy animals perform better. Finally, we want to guarantee our consumers that they can always obtain a quality product. Uh, we strive for a homogeneous product, which is tasty and healthy. Uh, the higher omega-3-6 ratio is a, makes it a healthier product. And by using linseed, uh, a tasty product can be obtained. And as I said before, it is a very, very qualitative product because cows can produce high quality food from raw materials. So the whole farm is a real family farm. Um, my mother, sister and I have each our own tasks on the farm. The farm is run by uh, three women. My mother, uh, Catherine, is the leading lady behind the play farm. Besides that, she also takes care of a big part of the administration and helps a lot with, uh, with the little calls. Um, my sister, Margot, studies uh, corporate communication and takes care of the social media of Finas and Ravot. Uh, and besides that, she also helps my mother with the administration. So uh, three women who run the farm with a gentle approach. Um, in this way, we as a family farm want to build on our passion, uh, available knowledge and competences to create a progressive farm that is ready for the future. Uh, women are very open-minded, I think. They can play an important role in uh, the interaction between farmers and consumers. They can introduce a soft approach on farming and the love uh, they give to their products uh, will be visible in the, the, the end product. So in conclusion, I also uh, want to add that um, big improvements can be achieved with small solu solutions. And that is something that I think women uh, can see uh, at first. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ines. And please click away. Yes, there you yeah. are again. Now we can see you uh, in full screen. What is this? soft touch you're talking about and what is, uh, creating big solution or, 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 or so how to make 
completely new things in small ways. What is what is this touch? What is this soft touch? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, um, I work with livestock, and I think um, that me, my mother, and my sister, we uh, are like mothers for our animals, and um, when we um, take care of them, they feel the love, and I think that's always good for. Um, how they grow and, and how they uh, eventually will um, be the best products uh, for the consumers. Um, and also uh, the soft touch, in my opinion, is also the way we uh, participate with other um, people. We um, interact with them and we invite them to see how it goes on, on farm and how we work here. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to, if, if I'm in Club Big, I'll try and come to see you and buy some beef from you. Perfect. Thank you very much for coming to me. Please stay on and, and, and let's all be uh, in the, the panel discussion now. We're going to the next, uh, the next phase in this discussion. And as I told you, we're running out of time. So we'll have, uh, uh, I'll allow for 10 minutes uh, after four o'clock, if that is agreed with everyone. So we'll, we'll go on a little, a little bit <clears throat> beyond four o'clock. And Bianca, could you uh, bring Margrethe van der Burg in the spotlight as well? There we all are. So we've been listening. Um, I'll introduce to you. Uh, we've been all listening, these three ladies as well. Um, I'll introduce to you Lotta Folkerson, who is the president of Copa Cojeca's women's committee and who told me we don't have a women's committee anymore in Sweden. That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, Frankje de Jong Knapp, Knapp from the Netherlands, uh, my fellow country woman. Uh, she's a farmer's wife. She's not a farmer, but she has a lot of influence on her husband, who is the leader of a farmer's umbrella organization as well. And next to her is Margrethe van der Burg. She's a she, she was trained as an historian. She's a researcher in, in gender at Wageningen University. Uh, so she is, well, in my opinion, I'd say she, she turned into an anthropologist or sociologist or something. She's been in the field for 20 years now. Uh, you've been listening. What did you learn from these presentations? And to the audience, Please ask your questions. What did you notice and what would you, uh, what would you like to have discussed by the panel? Um, so first of all, Lotta, what did you learn from these presentations? Uh, uh, first, my, I learned that everything we work in in Copa Cosheca's Women's Committee has been mentioned as important topics. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> I, I am. I have also. I'm not going to repeat it because the lack of time. But I think that we are on the right way, especially when it starts with also with our commissioner, gender commissioners' work, and all that we we need to clean up the policies. We need to clean up the system, but also work with the culture. And I live in one of the, of the world's most gender equal countries where everything from childcare and responsibility of home to various social security systems are gender equal. But when it comes to the mindset of, of many people, there is so much more to be done, even in Sweden. I'm a farmer. We have an herbal farm with around 70 hectares. And before we had a, a big dairy farm, but we have made the generation shift. So our oldest son is now the dairy farmer in the family. But we also have a lot of forest and we are in the forestry, forestry sector, who is even more male dominated than, than farming. And a lot of time I have seen salesmen running around my farm looking for the CEO or the real farmer. And then they I know they don't look for me, they look for my husband. So I think we have to make women's work more visible. And I also I think it's uh, uh, 
working with mainstreaming and gender equality is a long-term work. And too many times I have seen that the work of in placing it and work with it will end up in the knee of women. But it is not the women's issue. It is the men's. And I also, what uh, from today's day's experience is if we want to make the Green Deal successful in Europe, we have to put the women in front. Thank okay, you. that's a very clear statement, Lotta. Thank you. And Framtje, listening, what did, what did you learn from, from these presentations? What is the role of women in the green transition we're before? Well, I, I think um, the role of women is, is more hidden, uh, but it's, it's definitely there. Um, somehow it seems that like the farms are run by, uh, by male farmers, but it's, it's the women who are right beside it. And my own experience, I, I do work, I work for an, um, an exchange of, of farming families in, in Ireland and uh, here in the Netherlands. And, uh, my income is is going into the farm, so um, that's also part of of being a farmer. But I'm not uh, an entrepreneur myself. What I also learned from today is it's always the big question how to handle both the farm and uh, the family. It's uh, you have to do both, and uh, and you have to do both perfectly as well. Uh, what I really liked uh, about Ines' story is is to open up the farms, and it's usually the the, the women who are are doing that. I, I did the same. I started up a, a cultural program a few years ago, having art into our potato barns. We have an arable farm, and we had a fairly large group of farmers who joined us. What we did is have uh, high quality art into our potato barns, um, not only having people over to come and look at this art, but also telling our family stories of how we run our farms in a modern way, that we're not uh, back at the old ages, but that technology is very, very important. And I must admit it was uh, mainly the women part, the, the, the female partners uh, who who did that. And uh, we, we do it every five years and it's a great program. So opening up uh, our farms, to the, to the public is very important as, as well. So it's women that, that, that connect farms to the rest of us. Yeah, and usually it, 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 if it's a tourist or a social care farm or whatever, it is, it's usually the woman who's running that part, but usually uh, for, for very often, it's part of the main farm. So it's not visible, and uh, but it's there. We sh the farmer cannot do without that. Women, okay, and 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 what you just said said, my income goes into the farm as well, and that isn't visible either. Many women work outside, and their income is needed to run the farm. I don't know if everybody needs it, but our farm needs it, and we do it that way, and uh, it works out okay. I have an income from the farm as well, so. Okay, thank you, thank you, Frankie. Marjorie, you as an academic. What did you learn? Yeah, first, I'm quite impressed by all the good and interesting stories. And um, I'm also happy that uh, the COPA president is a woman now. Um, what I was struck by is um, uh, I see a lot of brave women. And of course, COPA tells a story. We are hardworking. But the circumstances in which the work has to be done can be much better improved. And when I hear uh, Licia talking about mainstreaming and um, setting aside the stereotypes, we still miss the way how to do that. There's a lot of polarization against farming. So it's uh, rational that women and men keep together and then it's quite difficult for some women to step up and say well I have a good idea while her husband is protesting so that's one point we have to look at on the other hand as well if we look at gender mainstreaming 
Um, I looked into the EU policies and then we see the column of agriculture and rural development as set apart, but all the other columns like health and infrastructure, they don't even mention. So if we talk about intersectionality, it's not only about race or age or whatever, ethnicity, it's also about rural and non-rural or urban and non-urban. And uh, I think I heard also very nice examples. We are working now at the uh, agriculture, well, the former agriculture university Wageningen on a gender smart project to have more um, gender equality policies at the universities, both uh, for the people working there and the good environment, but also for the contents. And then we come all the time, what is excellence? What is an excellent farmer? What is excellent research? Uh, why do we keep on looking at the results as the main important thing and not on the process? I heard several stories uh, uh, who were emphasizing that. And then, of course, when we look at farming, we need to see it in the constellation of family as well. So you can't give uh, policies on farming only if you don't take the whole farm into account. And we have wonderful examples from uh, research in the developing countries, what we can use there. Um, I think also it's important to see the heterogeneity all along Europe. Uh, we have different sectors, we have different uh, stages in which women enter farming, ending farming, whatever. And, and the main important the most important thing I, I came, uh, well, I was there in the 80s, 90s. We did a lot of research. Now it's it's more or less uh, reduced to almost nothing. But if you really want to do gender mainstreaming, you have to see into the gender and another impact in, uh, in from the beginning onwards. And when I look, you have to do that in an informed way. But we hardly have any good data. We have a lot of data about what, uh, how many cows, how many land, how many income, how many produce. But I can't work with the figures in a gender sensitive way. There are women and there are cows and there's land, but they, can't, they are not connected. That's not done. We don't know the credit systems, the inheritance system, the succession systems all over Europe. And of course, COPA has a big um, uh, um, assignment to, to include all, but to work with all these differences when we don't know, we first have to have a lot of research. And I would like to invite to work with us to set up that research. And I think it's also important that these good practices that you have, that we also bring them to our students because we, we have a lot of articles, but the good practices are never there. And a lot of students still think farmer farming in the old sense of making a lot of production, and that's it. Okay. I keep it to this. I, 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 I see that Lotta is nodding. What, what are you, do, do you recognize what, what Margret is saying, Lotta? Yes, indeed. And, and I think it's really important that we ha can create more data and collect and uh, have more data collection and information surrounding the economic and social situation of rural women. So we better can address inequality in rural areas. So I think, we, I think it, that's good because we have so big different difference b between European countries, both when it comes to a policy system, implementing of the CIP or other gender mainstreaming policies, or even when it comes to the status of women, I also I, I think as a I'm not a farmer's wife, and I'm not as not no I I don't want to be an assistant spouse either. I want to be a manager farmer a farmer. So I think I think we need to to have more more research. But even we can see at that research, we already got that companies, municipalities, organizations who work with gender equality become more, more successful and they earn more money. So I think we need more, more research. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I think the dialogue is very important to see how to redefine 
uh, farming, uh, how we look at it, what is success uh, to, to actually work with Green Deal and climate change. So not only data, but also dialogue to think through what does it mean. Okay, let me try to, to sum it up and to, to, to keep to, well, to the agenda and not to, to prolong it too long. We've been preparing this. Um, Lotta, you, 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 you gave me these beautiful words. It's not the man, it's not the women that are the problem, it's the man. Um, Marche told me, actually it's something very ordinary we're talking about. Women do the work. It's almost anthropological. They do it in our patriarchal kind of society we, 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 we evolved from. Women do the work, it goes unseen, and the man don't notice. And when you are in a transition, you know, you'll need women's work badly. And if you aren't aware, they can't do it because you won't acknowledge their roles. And actually, that is the basis of all of it. And that is what I, was, when I, what I said in my introduction. When all of this started, I said, what is this about? Is it about failed emancipation? angry women who want more power, et cetera, et cetera. No, it isn't. It is about we do jobs and we are the ones that indeed are uh, sensitive to change and we're better, better positioned to be sensitive to change. So indeed, that is where the role of women is and the rest of it comes with it. Cleaning up the policies, access to finance, as Francesca Gironi Coderetti is, is, is telling us. Um, that comes with it. But the basis is women have a role in society that is very important, but it goes unseen. Well, so I had a, a team of only women. I'm the only man. Why is that? And I experience it because they do the work indeed. So I confess as a man that this is happening. And I think this, this could sum it up. It's so important to recognize the role and to, to make sure that women can take their roles by having it acknowledged. Is this something the three of you can accept from a man to, to, to say it this way, to put it this way? And I'd like to ask the same question to the audience. May I have your votes, Lotta, my great Fraukje? Yeah. Okay, I have it. I have it. I already put something in the in the chat. It's not the men, it's the institutions. They have a tradition and yeah. we all have to work to unpack and break it up, both men and women. As you're saying, perhaps it's not it, it, it's 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 the institutions that 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 do it and the institutions create the stereotypes or keep the stereotypes in place. And that is and what we are part of them. Sorry? We are part of them, of course. It's not something uh, outside of us, but uh, it's it's not you or you or you, but we have to do it together. It's the system, as, 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 as a book would call it. And well, I, as I, as told, I told you Saturday, Dick, that I was when I was 16, I, I went as a foreign exchange student to the United States, to the state of Washington. And um, that was in 1977. And I was at a farm. And there was a poster hanging in my bedroom that said, uh, it are the men that control the world, but it are the women that control the men. And um, I took that home and still use it. You know, our role is, is, uh, is big, but it's not always visible. And I think we, we, part of that is our own fault. We are to blame ourselves, but it just goes the way it is. And if, if women are happy with the role they have, it should be, but, it should be more acknowledged, and I, I fully agree with all of you there that um, that it's it's uh, the women that have that are so important in this farming part, and also in the changing. I we have three sons; two of them are uh, partners in our farm, and I they call me the quiet partner, uh, but I I open up my mouth at times and point out uh, how they could change, and they're. Uh, I think that's that's important, and it happens a lot, but it's it's not visible, and it should become more visible. I fully agree with all of you there. Okay, thank you, Frankie. Thank you, Lotta. Thank you, Marfred. And uh, Wilhelmine Koning says in 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 the chat in the comments, 
uh, women need to have their earning as well. Without an earnings model, it will not work. And that has to do again with the institutions probably. I'll stop here the, uh, the panel discussion and I'd like to move on to Mr. Sean Kelly, M the European MEP. And there you are, Mr. Kelly. Take care. The very much. are yours. And could you comment on what we just said before you, you start your the final remarks? Not the final remarks? Could, could you comment on what we just concluded in the panel discussion before you start your final remarks? Yeah, I must say I was very encouraged by what I have heard. I think, firstly, it is very practical. I think that's something that women bring to society, maybe more than men, and also very much down to earth because all the points were made, all you would find yourself doing is not in, in agreement. There was a no such thing as trying to put it up there in the air as something unattainable. It was logical, it made sense. Women have a huge role to play. And obviously we need to facilitate that. And I thought the points made by the panel were very, very sensible. And particularly, I think the challenge for us is to recognize that women and men can manage farms, work on farms, and there should be no actually surprise that there's any difference there. There shouldn't be a difference. They can do equally well, as Inez pointed out in her presentation, managing a farm with a Belgian blue uh, cows, not the easiest in terms of the practicality of calving and so forth. So I'd like to have a, a chat with her maybe how does she manage that? So uh, the whole approach has to be, I think, we are all part of human society. Men and women are part of agriculture, but there needs to be more recognition of the role of women and probably uh, an opportunity for any women that want to be involved in farm at whatever level they like not a stipulated level, whether they want to be farm managers or farm owners or whatever, but they can fit in seamlessly to it. And I think that would make a huge difference. One other point I would make, and I think it's came across very much to me there, especially when Nines and others were talking. One of the issues we have nowadays, which are often jumped on by people, is animal welfare. Well, if you have more women involved, you'd have no issues, I think, with animal welfare because women are probably more sensitive, more understanding. They have obviously maternal instincts that men haven't got. And I think that is something that should be perhaps highlighted more because you wouldn't have issues in relation to animal welfare, certainly if women were seen to be in charge more often and particularly in decision-making and how animals are treated and so forth. So it's a very good discussion. Okay, thank you very much. And now the floor is yours for your final remarks. Thank you very much, Dick. And I would like to thank the Women's Entrepreneurship Platform, Copa Kojika, and Agni Food Networks for inviting me to speak here. Because I think it is a pivotal discussion and the role of women in the Green Deal is something that we need to highlight and work on. There is no doubt that the Green Deal, the gender equality strategy, and the ambitious targets for an inclusive and equal society set by the Commission, as Leza said, is, gr is growing in momentum and appreciation for the role women play. That's an important point. It's growing in momentum and appreciation. But of course, there's more to be done. And of course, the role that women have played traditionally in a male-dominated uh, society and especially in the male dominated industry and agriculture, that needs to be recognized more too. We still struggle to a certain degree with the general stereotype of farmers and farmers' wives, as Frika and Lotta were pointing out. This has meant that the role of women in rural areas is not as recognized as it should be, nor is the true value of their historical contribution to rural communities recognized enough. And that's something we need to work on. Over recent years, the, women, the number of women in farming is increasing, as we saw there with Ina's presentation. According to the most recent figures, 
around 29% of EU farmers and farms are managed by women. However, this figure greatly varies between the member states. For instance, in Latvia and Lithuania, the number is as high as 45%, whilst in the Netherlands, it is as low as 5%. So attracting women and young people to the sector is incredibly important. Yet at the moment, only 4.2% of women farmers are under the age of 35. That's a big challenge for us. Under the new cap reform, still being uh, negotiated, specific objectives to promote employment growth, gender equality, including the participation of women in farming, are outlined. And it is important to ensure that this is followed through by the member states in their strategic plans, because there's no point having an ideal if it isn't brought to fruition. The focus should be on removing barriers and protecting rights. Young girls should be able to look at a career in agriculture and see many possibilities. This is not just about working towards a fairer society, but also better utilization of available talent and human resources. The agricultural sector is facing a number of challenges from climate change and increasing urbanization. Rural communities often lack access to childcare, adequate healthcare and broadband, which ends up disproportionately affecting rural women, impeding their full participation in the workforce. So better facilities, services and infrastructures would improve living standards in rural areas, avoid isolation, rural exodus and encourage women to invest in vocational training and education. Training to develop leadership skills, business plans and IC tools can improve entrepreneurial initiatives and representation of female farm owners and cooperatives. Last year, the European Commission, as Lazy was pointing out, published its gender equality strategy, presenting key policy objectives and actions to make significant progress towards a gender equal Europe. And if it can happen under the presidency of Ursula von der Leyen, then it's going to be very difficult. In the European Parliament, there has been true engagement on this issue this term, and indeed, real momentum. At the moment, as EPP Rapporteur for the Trade Committee, I am working on the Gender Action Plan. Trade policy has the potential to promote international standards and legal instruments on gender equality, such as the Beijing Platform for Action and the Sustainable Development Goals. However, it would be foolish not to recognize that trade can also prove a risk of exposing women to major gender equalities. Therefore, we must ensure that trade policy is a force for good. The Green Deal is a sustainability oriented economic growth strategy, and as stewards of the land, farmers will be key to a successful implementation of the Green Deal. The green and digital transition is an opportunity to promote the economic empowerment of rural women, as well as help Europe meet its commitment of climate neutrality. My final point, there is a need to promote and further facilitate female-led rural entrepreneurship by ensuring access to finance and support programs that can reach innovative women, especially SMEs, as Margaret alluded to. Rhetoric must be met with action. Simply put, a more inclusive economy is a more reliant, prosperous, and fairer economy, as Francesca was saying. I also want to say that I'm aware a statement is being circulated during the webinar for comments. I would welcome taking the statement forward and working on the positive outcomes of this very valuable webinar. So again, thank you very much for allowing me to speak here today. I've learned a lot. It's very practical. It's doable. All we want is more power to women in rural areas and everywhere. Thank you very much, Dick, and thanks to everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly. Uh, more power to women. That is a very clear message. And to sum it up, I ple please um, put on your cameras. So, and uh, Bianca, bring everyone in. Don't put the spotlight on me, but on everyone. And I'll speak my, my closing words. Uh, so getting back to the beginning, Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Committee, um, she said that we need to use the other half of mankind, women in the EU. Um, far over half of the EU is farmland. And what we've learned today is that uh, 
the, the transition and the green transition we need will be driven by women. Otherwise, it will not succeed. So indeed, more power to women, more power to the other half in order to green this half of the land that is so important to green. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much, panelists, speakers, for being here and for conveying this message. And thank you very much for the honor as a man to host this show. Thank you very much.